deal with this morning. It's a very simple Zulmani thought. What's that smell? What's that smell? Look at somebody and ask them, what's that smell? What's that smell? My brothers and my sisters, as we, as we journey through life, uh, we, we, we are fully aware of all of our five senses. We understand our scent. We understand the senses of touch. We understand hearing, sight, and smell. Uh, we also understand taste. And we, one of the things about us as human beings uh, is that whether or not it's a good smell or a bad smell, we tend to ask the question, what's that smell? We, we want to know what is it when we walk by the house and it seems like through the kitchen we can smell their entire meal. We can smell the barbecue chicken. We can smell uh, the, the baked chicken. We can smell the, the, fry, the frying of fish. We can smell all those wonderful things. Am I right about it? Yeah. And we can also uh, walk through this journey of life and then there were some, some odors and some smells that makes us wonder what in the world is going on. Okay, maybe. Maybe not in Philly, maybe that's just an awesome world. Uh, you can walk by some folk and wonder what just happened. Uh, whatever the case, uh, the Bible tells us that our lives and our walk with Christ is like a fragrance that fills the air. Uh, so, beloved, I just want to pose a simple question as we deal with the Lenten season and as we deal with self reflection and as we deal with dealing with who we are as we prepare to celebrate Christ's resurrection. We must understand, beloved, that we too are just like what this text says. Our lives ought to be a fragrance that fills the air. But the George, the question then becomes, what is it that we smell like? Okay, y'all not, not, not with me yet. Y'all ain't with me yet. That's fine. I'm going to bring you around. We're going to get it in a minute. Uh, the text says, uh, Paul, Paul writes this letter to the church at Corinth. And he starts off by saying, we thank God who always leads us in victory because of Christ. Uh, beloved, understand that we ought to be defeated uh, by, the, by the issues of this world, by the issues of our sin, by the issues of human nature, based on the fact that we can't handle certain things that God sends our way. Uh, the text tells us that God leads us in victory because of Christ, not because of anything that we've done, but because of the fact that Jesus endured so much pain and Jesus came and sacrificed his life. Uh, the Bible says that we are led in victory because of Christ. Okay, now let me paint this picture for us, Sister McGill. Uh, in, the, in the Roman Empire, uh, I had the privilege of, of watching, of going to the movies this weekend, and I saw 300. Uh, and one of the things that I, I liked about the movie, uh, I, I, I like those kind of movies, uh, but they, they dealt with uh, some very uh, heinous uh, issues in that time where everybody wanted to go to war. And one of the things uh, that happened in the movie was when, when they had victory, they would hold up the head of the person they defeated, okay? Uh, so what happens here now in the Roman Empire uh, is that when they have gotten victory, when they conquered a place, they began to parade through back home, through their city, holding behind them the slaves and captives that they've taken in war. Uh, they, were, they hold behind them all those persons that are now defeated and now that they that they now have victory over. And Paul paints a picture here for the church at Corinth because he understands that they are familiar with the Roman celebration of victory after a battle. Uh, so let me sort of notice today that we are considered, uh, according to verse 15 of this chapter, we are considered to be those very captives, but Jesus is the one leading the parade. Uh, so we're not the ones uh, who, who have been defeated by, by life situations or by life circumstances, but we've been captured for the cause of Christ. Okay, let me help you understand, beloved, uh, that now, instead of us walking through the city and walking through life uh, with our heads hung low because we've been defeated by sin, we can now walk through with our heads held high because Christ is leading us through the city and he's leading us through life and leading us through the world. And, in the sign of victory that we too can now possess God's promise. Okay. And so, so, so Paul paints this picture and he says Christ leads us in this procession of faith to show others what it's really about to be a child of God. And so Paul here challenges us. He says God uses us to make clear what it means to know Christ. Okay. Uh, Sister Mary, uh, uh, this scripture right here says that it can go one of two ways. 
That can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. That God uses us to make clear what it means to know Christ. Joyce, what that text says to us is that through our lives, others who do not know Christ will become to know what we really believe about Jesus. Okay, so, so in this Lenten season, let's be mindful of what our lives are showing about Christ. Okay, if, if you come into church on Sunday, speaking in tongues, rolling around on the floor, foaming at the mouth, talking about how good God is, but as soon as you leave out of here, you raise in hell, that's what folk will believe about Christ. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, some of us, beloved, have a tendency not to represent Christ the way we ought to. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, folk are listening, folk are watching, folk, and folk are wondering what is it that the Christian is going to do. I know you go to Bible study, I know you walk around with your Bible under your arm, but as soon as somebody on the job plucked your last nerve, you the first one cussing. Oh, okay, uh, maybe that's just some other folk, maybe that's not in here. So the text says that God uses us to make clear what it means to know Christ. Uh, and if every time something goes wrong, uh, you snap it at the drop of a dime, uh, you are to be mindful that what you say and what you do is a reflection of who you claim to serve. Uh, is there anybody in here uh, that can thank God that I'm not the way I used to be? Because baby, God knows uh, if you had a step on my foot a couple of years ago, I would have told you where to go and what to do while on your way down there. But thanks be unto God uh, who causes us to triumph through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, maybe that was just my testimony. I don't know some trouble. Uh, but, but beloved, we understand here that Paul says to the church, he says, he says, God uses us to make clear what it means to know Christ. It's like a fragrance that fills the air. Uh, uh, I'm going to try to put this nicely. Some of us, then, some of us that claim to be Christians stink. We are a stench in the nostrils of God and God's people. We profess one thing on Sunday, but come Monday morning we're on the phone gossiping about somebody else on okay? God uses us to make clear what it means to know Christ. What does your life say about the God you claim to serve? What does your walk with God and your walk with man say about who God is in your life? Some of us, some of us have a tendency uh, to profess one thing but live another. But God is saying this is the season where I'm calling you out of that. I'm calling you to shift from what you used to be to what I need to shift from being an extension in my eyesight and to be an extension in the world to being something that represents uh, that God is great and there is victory in Jesus. He says, he says it's like a fragrance in the field of the air. And then he goes on to say to God we are the aroma of Christ and among those who are saved we give off the fragrance of life. But to those that are unsaved, those that are perishing, we give up the fragrance of death. Wow. Fix it up, preacher. I'm going to try the best I can. When you're saved and other folk around you are saved, you remind them that there's hope for eternal life. But for the sinner, your godly walk, watch that, let me believe, say that again, your godly walk reminds them that they're perishing and they got to do something about it quick. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to fix this analogy up in my mind. Y'all pray for me. For somebody that stinks, when you got on your good cologne, if you've had a fresh shower and you're good to go, you kind of remind them that they don't smell as fresh as you. Okay? The same thing is what the text is saying to us. That when we walk in a godly life and we walk according to God's will, then we remind folk that baby, that ain't so godly. Something about you has to change. 
Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe I need to fix it up another way. Uh, when, you, when it is that you walk according to God's will, and God begins to bless you, and God begins to open doors for you, and God begins to favor you, that those folk who are walking outside of God's will will begin to realize, baby, maybe I need to change something in my life so that I can become what God says I can be, so that I can have what God says I can have. Because what I'm doing right now ain't working. All it's doing is leading me to death. But maybe if I get my life right, and maybe if I make some better decisions, then maybe I can experience the favor of God. And so what happens amongst believers, Paul says, we are a representation of life to those who are saved. We are a representation of all of God's glory to those who know who God is. Because we have the understanding that I'm for the glory of God. And that when it's all said and done, I shall come forth as pure gold. But for those who are not saved, we are to live our lives in such a way that they'll say, what must I do to be saved? But the question, beloved, that we must ponder during this Lenten season is are we driving folk to Christ or are we driving folk from Christ? You want to be careful, my brothers and my sisters, about how you talk about God and then how you represent God. Because the same God who keeps you today can keep you there. But understand, be careful how you judge for God. Because the same folk you look down on today will be the same folk that God will raise up tomorrow. Is there anybody here that can testify that I can Then why should I even attempt to walk in the door? 
Because if he can't do it for you, and you've been there week after week, then what makes you think he's going to do it for me? So you got to be careful what you reflect about the God you serve. Uh, 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 uh. The question becomes for us, Sister Solomon, so how, how, how do we handle the weight of a bad day? How, how do we handle the weight of, of issues and feel, feelings of failure in life? We deal with them by still representing Christ even when we feel like we don't have the strength. How do you represent him? We represent him by still showing love. We, we represent him by still showing kindness to others. We represent him by still walking in the anointing that God has for us with the understanding that I'm representing to somebody what they might need in their life. Your life ought to make somebody say, I want to be saved. We got to be careful because there were a lot of folk Carry the title Christian, but don't carry the life. Yeah. There's a difference in saying you're a Christian and being a Christian. Oh, <laughs> Christianity, I really folk want to make it a religion, but it's not. It's a relationship. It's between you and God yeah. and you and I. Nonetheless, the symbol of the cross, me and God, and me and others. Where am I showing others about Him? So, 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 so. Challenge us for that. I promise we're done. We ought to be careful of what we reflect about Christ to those that don't yet know Him. We are considered to be like a fragrance that fills the air. We are to be like something that reminds folk that they can live beyond their broken place. We ought to walk, Sister Shepherd, in such a way that when folks see us, they see the very glory of God around us. We were talking uh, a few weeks ago about someone who pastor who was not in the church all the time, but exhibited the best Christ-like characteristics that some church folk don't even exhibit. Yeah. Who do you think they to the kingdom? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay, let me take you to the word for y'all believe me. Come here, Jesus, what you say? Uh, there will be many on the last day who will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, did not do this and did not do that in your name. And Jesus will say to them, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I knew you not. Uh, they were in the house, but he wasn't in them. In this Lenten season, Russell Tabernacle, I need you to consider are you in the house without the master? Mm. Or is he living in you? Stop going outside the church and raising hell and then come and smile in the pastor's face. Okay, that's not that's not for y'all. This for church down the street. I'm sorry, we got mixed up the message. But God says time is of the essence. Told you earlier, young man in school on Thursday had a great day in school. Never had any health issues other than asthma. He has a seizure on Friday, goes under cardiac arrest, and is now on life support. They're saying he's brain dead. From Thursday to Friday. Such a dramatic change in life. And yet we run around here fussing and complaining about what we don't like and what, who we don't like and what's not right and this ain't the way it's supposed to be. God says, is that more important or is it more important for you to represent who I am? Yeah. Represent him in such a way that folk will want to know him. That folk will desire to be around you and around him. Truth of the matter is some of us 
have gotten so caught up in the work of the church that we've forgotten what the church is really supposed to be about. So in this Lenten season, we must reflect on who we are. What is it that we need to let go of for the sake of giving God glory? I, I, I know folk are fasting from their Pepsis, they're fasting from, from, from meat, they're fasting from this, that, and the third, but it's a little bit deeper than that. What are you willing to let go of in order to be a better reflection of Christ? Let's stand to our feet.